Hi, I'm going to be demonstrating problem E9-7 that can be found in your textbook on page 415 or in the chapter 9 practice problems in your connect assignments in Blackboard. If you have not yet read chapter 9 in your textbook or watched the interactive presentations for chapter 9 in connect, then please stop this demonstration and do so, then come back and view the demonstration. You may also want to go back to Blackboard in the Chapter 9 folder and print out the worksheet that you see in front of you so that you can record the solution for your later use. Okay, let's take a moment to just briefly review what depreciation is. Depreciation is the wearing out or using up of a plant asset, and it's an amount we estimate because it's not always easy to figure out the exact amount uh, that an asset is wearing out, especially when it's a building or a piece of equipment. So there are three methods we are going to be learning and or that you may have learned already in reading the chapter uh, to estimate depreciation expense. That would be the straight line method, units of production math method, and double declining balance method. All three methods give you the same amount of total depreciation over the lifetime of that asset. And at the end of its life, each has the same residual or book value. It's management's choice as to which method they would like to use. The purpose in recording depreciation at all is to match the wearing out or expense of using up of that asset against the revenue that that asset helped you generate in the same period. In other words, we're adhering to the matching or expense recognition principle. We also want to make sure that the asset is shown on the balance sheet at its future benefit, which would be the remaining usefulness of that asset. Our depreciation entry accomplishes both. So there are three things we need to know before we can estimate depreciation expense, the cost, the estimated residual value, and the useful life. Now let's read chip, let's read Problem E9-7. Sonic Corporation purchased and installed electronic payment equipment at its drive-in restaurants in San Marcos, Texas, at a cost of $27,000. The equipment has an estimated residual value of $1,500. The equipment is expected to process 255,000 payments over its three-year useful life. The last sentence relates to units of production depreciation, which we'll cover in just a moment. Let's start with straight line depreciation. The formula for straight line depreciation is cost minus residual value, and then we multiply by 1 over its useful life. So the cost we said was $27,000. We're going to subtract the residual value of $1,500. And then we're going to be multiplying by 1 over its useful life of 3 years, or 1 third. And that gives us depreciation expense of $8,500 per year. In fact, every year we will have the same amount of depreciation expense. So I can copy and paste this in all three places. It's called straight line depreciation because if you make a graph with the dollars on the y-axis and the years on the x-axis, you will see a straight line if you connect the three points indicating the amount of depreciation. 8500 a year for every year. OK, so on our income statement, we'll show depreciation expense of $8,500 a year each year. What about the balance sheet? Well, the balance sheet has to show the cost less the accumulated depreciation and the consequent um, calculation of the book value. So let's show the cost at $27,000. The accumulated depreciation, how much we have depreciated so far? Well, so far just $8,500. Let's subtract to get the book value of $18,500. In year two, the depreciation calculation yields the same amount, $8,500. We do a journal entry, debiting depreciation expense, and crediting accumulated depreciation. On the balance sheet, 
We still show our cost at 27000 but our accumulated depreciation, in other words, the total depreciation we've recorded so far, is now $17,000. So our book value has come down to, I apologize, my mouse cursor jumped, has come down to $10,000. In year three, the depreciation expense is again $8,500. So we debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. Depreciation expense of $8,000 will be shown on the, on the income statement and on the balance sheet will show the cost, $27,000 minus accumulated total depreciation so far at this point is $25,500. And if we calculate our book value, $27,000 minus $25,500, we end up with a book value of $1,500. Now that's exactly what we should be ending up with because we said that the residual value, the amount that it's worth at the end of its life, would be $1,500, and it is. The reason it is because we subtracted that amount out here at the very beginning and we said don't show that amount as being worn out or depreciated because that's what it will be worth at the end of its life. So the total amount of depreciation expense we have over the useful life will be $25,500. If we were to total here and show our total amount of depreciation it would be $25,500. When might you use straight line depreciation to record depreciation expense? You might use it when an asset is used up evenly because the depreciation expense ends up with the same amount of um, depreciation expense every year when you use the straight line method, in this case 8500 a year. So we're saying that the wearing out is occurring evenly. With the units of production method, this would be most appropriate for assets that don't wear out evenly. Assets that wear out based on the amount that you use them. So let's take a look at the calculation here. Our calculation for units of production is very similar to start with the cost minus the residual value of 1,500, but then we multiply by the amount that that asset is actually used this year and divide by lifetime usage. It says per year expected payment transactions are 61,200 in year one. So we'll multiply by a fraction of 61,200 divided by total lifetime usage. And the total lifetime number of payments would be 255,000 payments. So this year we used it to to process 61,200 payments over its lifetime 255,000 payments and that would give us depreciation expense of 6,120. Let's see if I can slide this over so we can get this on one line. There we go. On the balance sheet we'll show cost of 27,000 minus how much depreciation we've accumulated so far, 6,120. We subtract accumulated from a depreciation from cost to get our book value and that would be $20,880. That's the remaining usefulness left in that asset. In year two we start out the same way. The cost, 27,000 minus the residual value. We multiply by the amount of usage this year over lifetime usage. In year two, it was used to, to process 140,250 payments, and we divide by lifetime usage. 14250 divided by 255,000. When we multiply that out, we end up with depreciation expense to reflect the wearing out of that payment processing machine of $14,025. We would debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. On the balance sheet we would show cost of $27,000 accumulated total depreciation so far. Well let's add these two up. That comes to 
$145. Now we subtract accumulated depreciation from cost to get our book value of $6,855. In year three, again we start out the same way. $27,000 is our cost. Subtract out our residual value. Multiply by the number of payments processed in year three, $53,550. Divide by lifetime usage of 255000 and then we get a depreciation expense of 5355 We debit depreciation expense, which goes on the income statement, and then credit accumulated depreciation. On the balance sheet, we show cost of 27000 total accumulated depreciation over its life so far of 25500 now we subtract the accumulated depreciation from the cost to get book value of $1,500. If we were to total out the total depreciation expense, it would come to $25,500 just as with the straight line depreciation method. Now the only danger in this method is if that asset is lasting you longer than you expected and you use it to process more payments than you planned, more than the 255000 you could over-depreciate this asset. So you should either change your estimate, estimate and develop a new fraction or stop depreciating when your usage totals 255000 Our last method that we'll learn, double declining balance method, is unlike the other two. The formula is very different. We take our book value at the beginning of the year and then multiply by two over the useful life. So our book value at the end of the year, well book value is cost, 27000 minus accumulated depreciation, zero so far. And then we multiply by two over its useful life, two thirds. That gives us depreciation expense of eighteen thousand dollars. Now again this is not cost minus residual. We do not subtract out the residual. It's cost minus accumulated depreciation or book value at the beginning of the year. We take that depreciation expense and we debit that account, credit accumulated depreciation, and we end up with eighteen thousand as our depreciation expense on the income statement. On the balance sheet we show cost of twenty seven thousand. Total depreciation so far, just the one year, 18000 we subtract to get a $9,000 $9, book value. In year two, start out with the book value calculation from the end of year one, 27000 minus how much have we depreciated so far, 18000 and then multiply by two over its useful life of three years. In year two, we get $6,000 of depreciation expense. We debit that account, credit accumulated depreciation. Then we go on to the balance sheet and we show cost of $27,000. Subtract how much depreciation have you incurred so far? $24,000. 27 minus 24 is $3,000 as our book value. And finally, in year three, our book value at the beginning of the year is 27000 minus how much depreciation have we had so far? $24,000 worth. And then multiply by two-thirds. The amount that we get would be $2,000. On our balance sheet, we'd show cost of 27000 accumulated depreciation of 26000 and a book value of 1000 A oh, wait. It can't be 1000 We said residual value, what it would be worth at the end of his life, would be 1500 So instead of using this calculation in the last year, what we do is we, we look at the book value at the end of the second year and then what we want it to be at the end of the last year, 1500 and then we back into this depreciation expense. How much would it take to go from 3000 down to 1500 and we do a calculation. 3,000 minus 1,500, that would be just 1,500. And that's how we end up with our last year's um, depreciation amount. 
So we're done with the problem. Now it's your turn. You can go either on to the practice problems or straight to your homework. Have a great day.